Hello and welcome to the Interreg Europe's online training on project websites. My name is Irma Strelskaita Deni. I'm head of EU communications unit at the Interreg Europe's Joint Secretariat. And it's my warm, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you all from Lille, where our secretariat is located. Uh, today it's a very nice, very sunny uh, day with a blue sky, a very warm day, and it's uh, very nice that you are today together with me and in the next one hour and a half together we will be indeed looking uh, on uh, how to edit your project website let's have a look what we will learn today first of all we will be talking about communication requirements and principles we will explain you how to get started if you haven't started uh, we will give you information on how to edit the project websites in practice and we'll share some help and tips. A very important notice. Uh, you saw this very nice uh, video. We started our webinar today uh, inviting to apply uh, for uh, Interreg Europe program. Indeed, this webinar is uh, dedicated to, to the ones, uh, to the project that are already approved to the project that were approved during the first call and are financed by Interreg Europe in the programming period 2021-2027. Um, it's important we give you guidance on this because some of you are new. Some of you participated in the previous uh, programming period uh, uh, projects and you know that we had a system how to edit the project websites. But in this programming period, we are changing the system. So indeed, this webinar is dedicated to the first call uh, approved project of this programming period. In case you and it can be that you mixed up and you are the project uh, from the past programming period, you can stay with us, but you need to be aware that information provided is, is really for the newly approved project. So, um, as I am your host uh, today of this webinar, it's very important to share a few practical uh, details. First of all, this webinar is recorded. And in case you need to share later on with the people who could not join today, but will be editing uh, the project websites, it's possible uh, the webinar recording will be published on our website and you will be able to share the link. We run this webinar on Zoom and uh, there we will be launching several um, uh, polls uh, to give you questions. Uh, but it's also uh, you are encouraged to give questions to, to us. I can see that in the chat you are very active uh, saying us uh, hello from various different countries. It's, it's really great. But in case you have questions uh, you want to ask so that it would be easier for us, we prepared Slido and please submit your questions uh, that we'll be answering live in the studio via the Slido. I mentioned already that we run this webinar via Zoom and we will be asking questions. Uh, and the first question I would like uh, to ask you all is how much experience you have with editing websites? There are several answers. I am beginner. I have never done it or very little. I am intermediate. I have done some editing um, websites and I am advanced. I have been editing websites for years. As you are now answering to the questions, I will use the opportunity to present also other colleagues that are together with me today running this webinar. First of all, it is Julie. Good morning, Julie. Good morning everyone. <laughs> Julie is a very important person in our secretariat because it's in her hands to develop uh, and improve our website and it was Julie who was behind this big project to host the project websites on our program website. 
Together with me today, I also have Petra and Josephine. Josephine is uh, animating our chat and Petra uh, is supporting us to run uh, all this webinar and to control all the technical side. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all of you uh, being today with us. Great. I think I can see that uh, almost everyone answered to the question how experienced they are editing the project website. And Julie, let's have a look to the results. We can see that 35% of the ones who answered say that we are a beginner. 43% uh, say I am uh, intermediate. And 20% uh, say I am advanced. That's good. That's good. Um, I mean, the website editing tool is very easy to use. So even if you are a beginner, you shouldn't worry. And um, if you are advanced, then there are some uh, tricks that you can play. There's access to the HTML so you can play around and be a little bit more creative. So that's great. Great. Yes, so exactly. The webinar we designed today will give uh, a tips for a dense one, will give the basic information for the beginners, and I think intermediate uh, ones should uh, uh, be fit after this webinar uh, to edit our website. Now, uh, let's move to our first topic, and uh, it will be me. I will quickly you present you communication requirements and principles. First of all, for our program, we approve the Harmonious project uh, communication uh, um, approach. We opted for this. Uh, that means there is one brand for all Intrac programs. And you probably know that we are not the only Intrac program. Intrac Europe is one of the Intrac programs. There are over 80 of uh, them in um, co-financed by the European Union. So we uh, have, uh, we adjusted our branding and harmonized with all other Intrac programs. And uh, for sure, uh, the requirements of set in the regulation. So uh, you as the project, you were provided with the main project visual, uh, as you can see here on the slide, which contains all, all the elements you need to use on all communication materials for the public participants in project activities. It means it's very simple. Once you do not forget, uh, no, I should say not do not. Once you use the project logo, you are covered. It means that um, you mentioned the co-funded co-funding of the European Union. You mentioned the reference to Intrig Europe. Uh, you mentioned your project acronym. It's great, and this is what indeed is requested in the regulation. Second, uh, part of this harmonized approach, we, uh, as the program, we host the websites uh, on our um, program website, uh, which uh, means uh, that it's, um, there, there are several uh, benefits uh, from that so that your project will be visible in the search when we do a general search on our website. And uh, it will be us, the program, promoting your key news and events. We will be selecting indeed the content that it's worth attention and putting on the spotlight on the program website. The other content you will be publishing will stay on your uh, pro project's um, website. So, uh, a quick reminder on the required activities. Um, on the required activities, you as the project partner, you should do in relation to the websites and social media. Uh, your organization, each project partner, is requested uh, to provide a short description about aims and results and the EU financial support on all partners' websites, means institutional websites and social media channels, if those exist. And uh, it's also we request on the program level so that you update, um, you update your project website with the images, videos, publications uh, that would be free to use by the program and the European uh, Commission. So now updating your project website, which was delivered to you um, just a few weeks ago, you should do it once every six months. This is the requirement we have. You should publish their high quality visual content. You should 
present your project activities, and you should focus on achievements. The requirement indeed to do it every six months, it's not that I would say uh, it's uh, manageable and we could see from uh, the past project that everyone could manage to update the project website. I mean, once at least once every six months. Uh, yes, and why to update? Uh, because you reach your project ob objectives, uh, you communicate the change you make with your project, and it also ensures the transparency of uh, the EU um, funding. So I think now we covered the main uh, principles and the last one uh, that is really uh, important indeed to draw your attention is about the copyrights. There is a new rule in the uh, current regulation of the um, uh, in the current regulation we are following that the content that we need to use royalty free non exclusive and evoke license for your images and that any pre-existing rights attached to it must be granted to the EU institutions and the program on demand. So you need to be very careful on what type of visuals you are using for your project communication and as well uh, for your uh, project, um, uh, project uh, pages, project website. So I think now we are uh, ready to go to the next topic. We will cover about the general princess, how the website works. And Julie, you are together with me now. Uh, maybe you could explain what are the source main principles? How does the project website work? Uh, yes, so uh, don't worry everyone, I'm not going to do any technical uh, description or anything. We're not going to be talking about programming. Um, it's really just the general principles um, to let everyone know that um, each of you, each project has your own websites which we've designed. Um, in order to have this integrated communication approach, they all have the same layout. But uh, the most important thing is that we've designed them, we've built them so that they are easy for you to update. That was our main objective. Um, and one of the ways we did this is through automation. Uh, so one, uh, the, the, how did we achieve this automation is really by connecting uh, to the portal. And um, so if we can change the slide. Right, uh, so yes, we connected your website to the portal. Uh, that means that the information you put in the portal gets uh, sent directly to your project website. You don't have to do it um, more than you don't have to do it twice, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, Julie, you explained us indeed how it works. Maybe you can tell us also how to get started. Who can edit the project websites and what indeed uh, the roles have the ones that can edit? Uh, because we call the ones that have the roles the web admins indeed. What would be their role if you could answer to those two questions? Yes, we assigned um, the role of, we, we have a role called a web administrator for anyone who can edit the website. And this is basically because if you don't control it a little bit, then it'll be a free for all. Everyone will be editing your website. Um, and so basically you can have as many web admins or website administrators as you need. We really encourage you to share it uh, amongst your partnership. Having said that, uh, do you know? Do think that the more people you have, the harder it can be to track. Who does what change? So you don't need to have everyone as a website administrator in your project. Uh, anyone who wants to be a website administrator for your project needs to have an Interreg Europe Community account. So if you haven't done that yet, we really um, encourage you to to join our community. Mm -hmm. Maybe just to add, uh, Julie, on 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 this. Uh, from the past indeed programming period, we saw that a common experience was always to have um, the communication, like um, communication manager, the one who was in charge of the uh, project communication was very often also uh, acting as the web admin. And usually the lead partner also was appointing himself to be a web admin so that at least those are two important uh, key roles at the project and that those two to, to key people can access indeed uh, and edit uh, the project um, websites. And now let's see what the web admin's role is. Yes, because the website administrator doesn't just uh, edit the project website, 
they're also responsible for validating uh, good practices. So over the course of your project, you will identify a, a number of good practices and you will be submitting them to our database. Uh, the website administrator is really, I think, the first line of defense, if you would like. Uh, they're responsible for reading the good practice, making sure that it is something that was identified during your project and that the content um, is good enough to be published. So that's another role. And then they're also responsible for um, managing your Interreg Europe community network. Uh, this is a place uh, for the individuals involved in your project, um, your partners, your stakeholders. Uh, it's, and we'll see more uh, about that later on uh, in this webinar. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Julie, for explaining this. Um, we mentioned already that all the questions you have, you should be submitting them via the Slido, and I can see that there are some questions uh, submitted and we will be taking them live. Uh, before we go to the questions and before I announce what we have on the agenda, I would like to ask uh, you all uh, to respond to the question. If you have started already the web editing, have you already started editing your project website? Yes or no? Uh, yes. Um, and after the question, yes, we can see. I see. Yes, yes, indeed, this is the answer I would like to hear. And we see that uh, most of you already answered to the question. And I can see that only around 20% indeed uh, say that you started to, 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 to edit and uh, more than 80% have not started to edit. So Julie, indeed, um, the next chapter or the next topic we will be covering, it's the video we will be showing to you. It's very relevant for, for everyone. Uh, as in this short video, we will be presenting indeed how to assign a web admin, uh, how to, and indeed how to, how to start uh, and where indeed to go. So uh, let's now watch the first video. And after that, we will be in the studio together with Julie taking the first questions uh, that would be relating, re related uh, to, the to the question uh, we will tackle and in the, in the, we will be answering indeed in the video. How to assign your website administrator. The role of website administrator is assigned through the portal, which is our project monitoring system. This is where you created your project and where you will do all your reporting. Only the people with admin rights to your project can add a website administrator. And this is usually your lead partner, but it can be other people as well. So once you've identified who these people are, ask them to log into the portal and go to their dashboard. On there, they should find the project. Click to enter. Scroll down to the project users section. Here you should find a list of all the individuals in your project. Find the one who you want to be to make a website administrator. If that person is not on the list, simply add them. Once you've found the individual who will become your website administrator, click to enter. At the bottom, you can assign them the web admin role. And finally, click Save. It will take one to two days for the portal to sync with our website, which means that it will take one to two days for you to get access to your uh, website ed editing tool. Remember as well that you need to have an account in our Interreg Europe community in order to be a web admin. If you have any problems at all, just contact your communication officer. How to access your website's editing tool. Your project admin has gone into the portal and given you web admin rights in a few days for the portal and the website to sync. This means that you should be able to edit the website editing tool. But how do you find it? Well, there's one in two ways. The first one is directly from the Interreg Europe landing page, our homepage, interregeurope.eu. Once you arrive, simply log into your community account and select project websites. You will arrive on your project website dashboard, which will list all the projects you are allowed to edit. Simply click on the edit project button 
and this will give you access to the editing tool. The second way you can access the tool is directly from your own projects page. So go to your project homepage by typing in our domain, interreg.eu forward slash your acronym. Again, log into the community and the edit button will appear. You'll find this button on every page you want to edit. Simply click and access the editing tool. You're now ready to start adding information, so why not watch our next video on how to add information to your homepage. So, uh, now you know indeed how to access and where to go to edit uh, your project website. I think uh, uh, the two things you need to remember, if you want to modify the web admins or to appoint the rules, you go to the portal and in uh, one or two days, it's all happening automatic, uh, this uh, specific role will appear in the uh, community profile. You have that Interreg Euro program, so it's very important that the person who would uh, uh, be added as the web admin would have the community profile. And this is very easy. You can uh, check uh, on our website. You can search for people and you will see if the profile is existing or not. And in case not, you need to uh, tell uh, the specific person to create uh, the, the profile. I see that we have many questions really posted and I'm trying to screen and to see uh, if we do have the questions related to the first section. Uh, um to the questions we just uh, answered in in the in the video and i am taking uh, those uh, then live uh, then we will be watching a few other videos and we will be taking the questions that are relevant after after each indeed relevant after each um specific topic we tackle okay um so we have a question that sounds as following. Thank you very much for including information from the application. Is it possible to make the tiny changes if we wish to have the text more easy uh, reader friendly, Julie? Uh, the short answer to that is yes. Uh, we will see how to use uh, the different tools available um, in the next few videos. Um, I will give a spoiler and say that um, they're called rich text editor tools, but uh, I won't give any more than that because it's all explained at length uh, in the next video. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, then I see the comment, we will be shown the steps how to access our website. Yes, this we already did. So I think now you know how to do it. Uh, and yes, I see several questions related. Um, Yes, and there is one person saying, I did all the presented steps, but no website assigned to my community portal. What could be the issue, Julie, with that? So um, it depends on when you, um, you, made, you made the assignment. So when did someone go into the portal and give you the web admin role? It might take one to two days uh, to sync. If you did do it, say, a, a week ago, and they still can't see uh, your project websites, then uh, contact uh, what your communication officer because there might be another problem uh, and we'll look into it and solve it as quickly as we can. But it should take uh, one to two days. Yes, another question related to what uh, we just talked. Can there be one web administrator per project or more? There can be as many as you need. So if you if your project only wants one, then you only assign one. I've seen one project have 12. So uh, the system is as flexible as you need it to be. Yeah, but there I think the tip of the Julie is valid. She was talking before that you need to be careful. It's up to you to decide how many web admins you add. But uh, you also need to know that uh, it's good to have. Uh, I mean, you, you need also to make sure you agree on who uh, and how will edit your project uh, website. I think we uh, answer to the questions related to, to, the, to the first topic, the rights, the access, and I can see many questions uh, related to, to the uh, uh, news uh, uh, creating events. So I suggest that we watch now the second video uh, on this topic, and then we will be back in the studio to answer again your questions.
how to edit your homepage and add an image to the top banner. Your project homepage is really important. It shows people what your project is about and lets them know what you and your partners are doing. You should make it as engaging as possible by using images and videos, structuring your content with headers and bullet points, publishing interesting news and events, and most importantly, writing in plain English. The top banner of your website is equally as important because it's the first thing people will see. It shows your acronym, your project title, your topic, and your subtopic. All this information comes from the portal and you can't change it. But you can, however, add a striking image in the top banner. So to add an image, simply click on the edit button to access the editing tool. You'll arrive to the about the project tab. So scroll down to the top banner section where you can see a add media button. Now, before you upload any image, make sure you comply with the program's copyright rules. Please don't upload an image you don't have permission to use. And we also suggest that you follow the guidance on width and size of the image. Now to upload an image, start by clicking add media. Choose a file from your computer. and fill in the metadata. This information is important because it makes the website more accessible to everyone, including those with disabilities. So please don't underestimate it. Under the alternative text, describe what you see in the image. In this case, I see a blonde woman from the back walking towards her colleagues inside a workshop. Next, give your uh, image a title. For example, in this case, I will say raise project stakeholder at a social enterprise. When people will hover over the image with their mouse, this is what they will see. Next, describe who owns the image. This image belongs to the raise project. And give us their website. Finally, Confirm that you have the right to use the image and that you grant Interreg Europe and the Commission the right to use it for communication purposes. Now, once you've ticked all that, click Save and Insert, and the image will appear under the top banner of your website. But you're not done yet. Don't forget to scroll down to the bottom and click Save Changes so that the changes take effect and you see them on your banner. How to edit your project summary. Your project summary describes what your project is about. It's the main introduction for your key target audience, so you should write it in a clear and straightforward way. To save you time, we filled in this section for you with the information you provided in the portal. But remember that you wrote this description in your application form with the main purpose of getting your project approved. You wrote this text for us, the program. Now, you need to adjust it and describe your project to your main target audience. And that's not the program, at least not here on your website. So, click the Edit button to access the editing tool and scroll down to the Project Summary section. Here you have the Rich Text Editor functions. You can use them to make your text more engaging. Use the bold to highlight keywords, avoid italics because it's difficult to read, and avoid the underline because people think it's a link. If you do want to create a link, simply highlight the text, click the chain icon, add the URL, and a title to describe what the link does. This could be, for example, click to go to a new page, opens an external link, click to send an email, click to download. I also recommend you fill out the ARIA label. This helps people with assistive technology understand what the link does. So you can simply repeat what you see, what you've written above. And then when you're done, click Save. 
Use the bullet points and the numbered lists to make your content easier to scan. Remember that people don't read websites, they scan them looking for keywords and information. Use the copy and paste options to remove any formatting you might have picked up from a Word file, for example. And if you're feeling brave, you can click on the source, which gives you access to the HTML. You'll need this later on to add videos. But don't worry, we'll figure out, we'll learn more about these functions when we're learning how to create news and events. And when you're done, don't forget to scroll all the way to the bottom and save your changes so that you can see them on your homepage. Creating a call to action. A call to action is a marketing term. It refers to an action you want your audience to take, like filling in a survey, downloading a report or a publication, uh, or even registering to an event. It's usually written as a command or an action phrase and uses keywords like sign up, download, register, etc. It's really a great way to promote one piece of content over the others. On your homepage, you have the option to add one of call to action. And if you need it, simply scroll up to the top, click edit this page to arrive to the website editing tool. On the about the project tab, scroll down to the call to action section where you can fill in the required fields. Create a title something short and catchy, but that immediately lets your audience know what the main subject is. An example could be, do you like our training videos? Next, describe what your content is about in 400 characters or less. So in keeping with my example above, I could write, we want to know what you think about our project website training videos. Are they too long? Too short? You tell us. Next, Insert a link to the content you want to promote and write your call to action in a box below. My call to action is fill in the survey. This will appear as a blue button and will really encourage people to click. Finally, you can add an image and it's important because it's important to make your call to action stand out. But don't forget to comply with the copyright rules. So to add an image, simply click add media, choose a file from your computer, or upload one from your media library, and click insert. Before you finish, remember to scroll down and save your changes. And there you go. Your call to action is now ready to attract attention. What will this project change? Your audience uh, might be interested in knowing what impact your project will have on them, their friends and family, and everyone else who lives in their region. So describing the impact your project will have on the policies and lives of the people in the regions is a great way not only to promote your project, but also to engage with the people whose lives you're trying to improve. So if you wish, you can describe the impact in a thousand characters or less. Use the options on the rich, rich text editing field to structure your content. Use the bold key to highlight keywords. Use the links to link to external content. Use lists, numbers or bullet points to make your text easier to scan. And also use the formatting options to remove any unnecessary formatting. These are just some of the options you have available to you. So go ahead and be creative. And then when you're done, simply scroll to the bottom and click Save Changes. Promoting your newsletter and social media channels. Do you have a newsletter to push your project, its events and achievements? Even though we don't provide you with one, we've still made it easy for you to get people to sign up to your newsletter through this call to action on our project website. To fill in the information, scroll up to the top of the page and click the edit button. This will give you access to the website editing tool. Once on the about the project tab, scroll down and you'll find the newsletter section. Insert the link to your sign up form and click save changes. This will automatically make the newsletter call to action banner show up on your homepage. But what about your social media channels? 
Is your project on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn? Do you have a YouTube account for your videos? Are you reaching ge younger generations on Instagram? Well, you can promote them on your website. You have to go to your social media profile pages. So your project's Facebook page, your project's Twitter. Insert the link from your internet browser into the relevant field. For LinkedIn, you need to share the company page link. To find this, you go to your LinkedIn company profile. On the left, under your icon and number of followers, you'll find a share page button. Click the share page button and copy the link. You'll find also step-by-step -step instructions in our user manual. And finally, does your project regularly use the same hashtag? We use Europe Cooperates, for example. You can write it here for everyone to see. And when you're done, don't forget to click Save Changes to apply the change and see the banner on your homepage. You're now ready to get social. Good. Now you know how indeed to, to edit uh, the landing page of your project um, website. And Julie, um, you talked, uh, you provided all technical details on how to do it, and also you provided some tips. So let's now challenge our uh, 100 webinar participants uh, to see um, what do they think? Indeed, they will be creating many news and stories. And um, how do they think it's important uh, to keep uh, the audience engaged with a new story? And we have prepared a question with several uh, answers. You can see it now on your on your screen. And you need to, there are one, two, three, four, five different answers. And you should pick uh, the ones uh, you think that are correct or that uh, the ones uh, that would help your audience engaged. And the answers are use quality images and videos, use a lot of jargon and technical words, write really long academic sentences, write in plain English, and use headers and bullet points to structure your content. Yes. So um, I see our webinar participants are answering to the question. Uh, we will, I think it's fine. I can see that most of them did. So let's uh, let's share the results and see what, what answers they have chosen. So 94% uh, uh, of them say that uh, the qualitative images and videos should be used. Uh, the others say that 87% uh, say that they use the headers and bullet points to structure your content. And 68% uh, say that uh, we should write in plain English. No one says that we should write really long or academic sentences. And one person says we should use a lot of jargon and technical words. Any comments, Julie, about the answers and the suggestions of our webinar participants? I'm I'm uh, I think we made the uh, the questions a little too easy but I think that was also the point. Um I'm also wondering if that one person who said use a lot of jargon and technical words was uh, joking uh, just to liven things up a bit. Uh but yes, I think everyone got the answers correctly. Um you know, images, videos, this is really a great way to to get people's attention and to get them to engage with your content. Um Plain English, uh, remember that, you know, um, even if you are fluent in English, uh, having, you know, text that's easy to understand is always appreciated. Uh, and, you know, headers and bullet points are, um, are key because people don't sit there and read websites. They really go through with their eyes. They scan, they look for keywords. And once they find the keyword they're looking for, then they stop and read around it. So uh, that's, uh, that's, yeah, best way to keep your, your audience engaged. Yes, thank you, Julie, for confirming that our participants were right and know indeed how to engage uh, with their audience. Now, let's have a look to Slido and to the questions we received. 
um, the project, the first call project started some months ago and it's clear that they already, some of them did some activities. So one of the questions is that can uh, the news, basically past news or the meetings or activities that already happened be added uh, now to the website? Uh, yes, yes. So uh, we'll see this a little bit in the next video when you're publishing news um, or even events. You select the date uh, that the event is or the news is published. So if something happened in the past, there's nothing preventing you from uh, post-dating it, if you like. So going uh, and putting a date from the past, is, that's perfectly acceptable. Yes. Then, can a short description of your project on institutional partner websites be in their local language or it's obligatory to be in English? Uh, on our website, we really would prefer that it's in English. The program's uh, main language is English. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't um, do a description in local language on your institutional website, for example, but um, on the Interreg Europe uh, website we provide you, we would really prefer that it was in English. Yeah. Okay. I see the other questions are more detailed. So then I will suggest because it's it's true that the next video is about the news and creating the event. So maybe then let's watch it and then uh, we'll take the other questions that we have in the in on the slide. Creating a news article. You can promote the latest news on your website to let your target audience know what is happening in your project. Go to the website editing tool and click on the news tab. From here, you'll see all the articles your, your project has published in the past. You can add news, edit it, or delete it. Click the add news button to create new content. Once you're here, fill out all the required fields. Start with your title. Make it short and catchy, but informative. Next, add a copper image to make your article stand out. It means that people are much more likely to click on it. Select Add Media, choose a file from your computer or one from your media library. Don't forget to comply with the copyright rules. In the summary box, write a short description of what your article is about. This will appear on the promotional card. In the content field, insert your main text. Use the rich text editor tools to structure your content. We've already seen bold, links, lists, and all the copy and paste options, but you can also use quotes, images, tables, horizontal lines, headers, and videos. Let's see how they work. To add a quote, simply type your quote and click on the icon. To add an image, click the media icon, choose a file from your computer or one from the media library. If you wish to add text underneath the image, hover over the bottom until you see this little red square. Click on it and then you can type some more. To add a table, click on the table icon. Choose how many rows and columns you want and click OK. Then you can start to add your content. Use the horizontal line to split your content and use the headers to structure it and make things easier to find. Simply select the text and choose the size. To add a video, click on the source code to access the HTML. Go to your online video channel like YouTube or Vimeo, find the video you want to embed, click the share button and select the embed option. 
this it will give you some an embed code which you need to copy and paste into this content field it should look something like this once you've added the embed code simply click the source button again and your video will appear when you've structured your content in a way that makes it easy to read scroll down to add a few tags tags are a way to categorize and group your content in the long run it makes it easier to find when people search using keywords start typing keywords into the tag field and see what results come up we do have about 400 tags in the system so try a few different variations for example if you cannot find the word bike you could try cycle if you cannot find the word train you can try rail We recommend you add no more than 10 tags per article. If you find that an important keyword is missing from the list and you think it could be useful to you and others, please let your communication officer know. Finally, select today's date and click Save Changes. Congratulations, you've published your first news. Creating an event article. Imagine you have a stakeholder meeting coming up in a few months and you need to know how many people are coming so you can book a large enough meeting room and order enough sandwiches. In, instead of adding a news article to promote your meeting, why not create an event article? This is because the template is specifically designed to give people the practical information they need to attend. So what is an event? We consider an event an activity that is usually set in time on a specific day or over several days is location based, for example, at a specific venue online or maybe both and could have a registration process or might be open to all. If you want to add an event, go to the website editing tool. Next, click the event tab. This is your event dashboard. Here you'll have all the events that your project has created in the past. From here, you can add an event, edit an existing one, or delete one. To add an event, click Add Event, and fill out all the required fields. Start with your title. Make it short and catchy, but informative. Next, add a cover image to make your article stand out. Click the Add Media button, choose a file from your computer or one from your media library. And don't forget to comply with the copyright rules. Next, add the date of your event. So open the calendar, select the date, select the start time and the end time. If the, if the event is held over many days, you can click the multi-day event box and then you add the start time, no, sorry, the start date with the start time, the end date with the end time. Afterwards, we ask you for a bit more details about the event itself. Is it in person, at a specific venue, online, or is it both? If the event is in person, put in the address of the venue. Do you have a registration form for people to fill in? If yes, you can add the link here. What about a additional website where you have a lot more information about the event itself? If you have one of those, you can add the link here. This is where you create the button that goes with the event website. And the content box is where you put your main article. Use the rich text editor tools to structure your content. To find out how to use these tools, please watch our video on creating a news article. Next, add tags to your article to make it easier to find. Simply start typing keywords 
and click to select. Try not to use more than 10 in one article. If you want additional tags, contact your communication officer. Finally, if there is someone people should contact with questions about the event, add their name, phone number, and email. Remember to comply with GDPR requirements and get their consent first. Last but not least, click Save Changes. Congratulations. Now everyone will come to your meeting. Great. Now, indeed, you know how to publish events and uh, uh, the news. And I can see that there are several questions related to, to this topic. And uh, Julie, let's have let's answer those um, those uh, questions. Um, one question is uh, a very good question about the time zone. What time zone is displayed based on persons? Is it based on person's location? That is a very good question. Uh, it's a question I've never received before. Uh, I don't know for hundred for sure, hundred percent, but I would uh, assume that the time zone is uh, the French time zone because that is where our developers are and that's where we are. Um, I could investigate if it would be possible to have the time zone of um, uh, of where the person is located, but um, I think for now uh, it's yes, it's the it's a, a CET or CEST depending on if it's winter or summer. Yeah. Okay, Julie, are past events, stakeholder meetings, project meetings are considered as news or events? Indeed, how to decide? Should it be published as the news article or as an event? I think it really depends on uh, the message you're trying to, to uh, send. If you're trying to get people to sign up to come to the meeting, then it would be more an event. Uh, but if you're, if the events already happened and you want to talk about the results, uh, what did people discuss, what were the outcomes, um, then it's more of a news article. Mm -hmm. uh, can you adjust the size of the image inserted in the text of the news? Uh, you can, uh, I believe you can. If you click on edit media, you have different options. Um, you might also, if you're if you're very brave, you might also um, play with the HTML where you could get access to the number of pixels. But I would rec if you want to keep it simple, um, I would um, resize your image on your laptop or your computer and then upload it. Um, inside it would it's probably easier to do it that way than to try and play uh, with the rich text editor tool. Uh, Julie, is it possible to edit the media library? Uh, it is. Well, when you mean media library, you mean documents or do you mean so the documents are not available yet. Uh, they are coming soon. So this is already um, I'm already giving away some of my um, my later uh, points. But um, yes, yeah, so for documents, files, uh, there will be a media library coming soon, um, probably over the summer. Um, and we will be giving you um, more help on how to upload documents there. A similar question we had, is it possible to zoom at the image and select part of the image we would like to focus on? At the moment, no, um, although this is uh, something we're exploring. Uh, to see how, if, if, and how we could do it. So at the moment, so you just have, um, if you, the image you upload is what you will see. That's why I was uh, talking about editing it outside of, outside the system. So on your laptop, edit it with uh, any simple uh, image tool. And, but yes, we are exploring that idea. Mm -hmm. A very important question about the local languages. Is it recommended to have news in the local languages for local stakeholders, considering website indexing? What is your advice on this? Um, so again, the, this is a complicated question. The program's main language is English. Um, and so we would recommend you to write in English, of course, um, if you do need to communicate in local languages, um, it might be possible to do a translation or but um, but also I would have the English available for everyone else to see as well. 
An option indeed for this can be also use your institutional pro, uh, institutional websites. If you have a, a link where you publish information about the project, it could be also a good indeed a, a space to publish information in the local language and then to link with your project website, which would be in English. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I see uh, that we are well advancing with our um, uh, webinar. However, there are two important topics to cover. So I suggest uh, those topics are about the policy instruments and then managing the context. So I suggest that we now, Julie, you present us how to update the policy instruments. And, uh, and then, I mean, we will be taking the questions afterwards as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, so your policy instruments uh, over the course of your project, you will be working on a number of policy instruments. Um, if you go to the website editing tool, and now we've seen in many videos how to do that, how to find that, um, you, you go to the policy instruments tab, and then you will see all the policy instruments you have in your application form listed. You'll notice that you cannot edit the title and you can't edit uh, the partners responsible for those policy instruments, but you can uh, edit the description. And so here we would recommend that you play around with the rich text editor tools to make the text very easy to scan, um, because obviously the text you wrote in the application form was uh, aimed directly at the program and your website is now aimed at um, your main target audience. So what happens if you need to change a policy instrument? Um, you can't do that on the website. You can only do that in the portal and you need to contact your policy officer so that they can guide you through uh, the process. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie, very important question about uh, context. Indeed, how we manage context and how they are updated on the website. Maybe you could just present us that. Of course. Uh, so the contact page on the website is where you, we display the information about the lead partner and all the partners and also the main contact people if anyone has uh, any questions about your project and as well as your interact your community network. Um, if you go to the contact the contact tab on the website editor tool, you'll notice there isn't really much there. So and that's basically because um, all or most of the editing is done through the portal. For the lead partner, for example, um, in the portal, you've assigned uh, the main contact individuals and we take that information and we display up to two contacts. We display their name, their phone number, their email, obviously all um, hidden so that you, you can't just see this information. Um, and so if you want to update the contact people for the lead partner, simply go to the portal, assign them that role, much like we saw how you do with the web admin, um, and, and it'll take a few days and then the website will update. Um, and if you want to update the information about the partners, there's also uh, different ways to do that. The first way, again, is through the portal. It's the magic word. Uh, so if you go to the portal in your project, you can edit uh, certain pieces of information about your partners, um, including the name, the address, the region, uh, the type of partner, and you can also add a website. And the second way to update information about your partner is inside the community. So if you have a community account, or if you're about to create one, you'll be asked to either create an organization if it doesn't already exist or link to one that's already in our system. Uh, and if you're linked to that organization, you go, you log in, go to your um, account menu on the top right of your screen, and you can click the edit organization button. And then you can add a logo. Um, you can describe how big your organization is, if it's big, medium, or small. You can write a little description about what your organization does, add your social media profiles and your websites. And this is really um, interesting, not only to bring more content um, to your website and promote your organization, but also it's a great way to find new partners. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. um, and then, yes, and of course, if what happens if you want to change a partner, uh, because that can happen. Um, so if that if that is the case, although hopefully not very soon, uh, just contact your policy officer um, and uh, they will help you through that process. 
And the final one is the uh, network, the Interreg Europe Community Network. This is a place where you can show off the individuals that are behind your project. So not just um, the organizations, but also the people. So the stakeholders, the partners, anyone who wants to be connected to the project. So how does it work? Um, when someone creates an account in our community, they can say that they're part of your project. You as web admin will get an email, a notification to say someone wants uh, to be part of your project. Go to the contact tab on the website editor tool. You'll see there all the new requests for project members and you just click accept or refuse. So it's really up to you. Uh, to show how many people in our community are engaged in your project. Uh, Julie, indeed, on this, we had a question on, on Slido asking what is the difference between approved members and community members? Uh, so um, there, a community member, anyone can join the community. Uh, we don't restrict that. And if they say they're part of your project, uh, it's up to you to decide if you do know this person or not. So we don't, uh, the program doesn't manage that. Uh, whereas there's also the individuals who are inside the portal. These are the official uh, project partners, the official people who are responsible for reporting, uh, for communication, for finance, et cetera. So there's um, the community uh, accounts are more, um, about engagement uh, and social uh, aspects, whereas the portal is more official. So just to answer this, I mean, what Julie was saying that community members are considered as the wide community of Interreg Europe uh, program and approved members probably related to the project members would be the ones that you connect and are linked with your project. Uh, Julie, um, as we were talking now about all the context, there was also another question related on Slido about uh, about uh, um, that, asking how to know who is my uh, project officer and uh, communication officer. And indeed, uh, um, there are several answers to this question because the, the com co communication officer or manager can be the one of your project. I mean, the one you need to appoint in your project partnership, in case you don't know who is this person, it means you haven't appointed this person. So it needs, it's your as lead partner role to appoint the communication manager who would manage communication for your project. If your question is related, who is your communication officer at the Joint Secretariat, because at the Joint Secretariat in our organization, you have the finance officer who supports your project, you have your policy officer who supports your project, and you also have communication officer who supports your project. So this is very easy You when you see indeed communication by email coming from us, you can see who are, what are the names indeed included in the conversations we have with you. And there is always your policy officer, finance officer, and also communication officers names uh, included. So this indeed, you know who is your reference points in our organization. Okay, I think now we cover the questions related to, to um, uh, the context and we can go to the last uh, last chapter we have about any additional information um, we want to pass related to the project website. So, uh, yes, yes, any, I just um, any. Yeah, I just had a few extra little uh, comments, um, if especially uh, around help, how we can assist you more. Um, and so there's a few ways to get more advice. Um, one is directly inside the web editor tool. Uh, so when you're editing your homepage, for example, you'll see these big buttons called help and tips. Um, if you click on that, you'll have a panel come up on the uh, right side of your screen and it'll list uh, different sections where you'll find information, for example, how to upload an image, what image size to use, uh, how to be more engaging with your content. So um, directly inside the editor tool, you'll have uh, some of this information. Um, we've also written a user manual, which is a step-by-step -step guide on how to um, edit the website. We've sent it with the invitation of, for this event, but it's also on our website um, in the 
project implementation page. I think my colleague will share a link in the chat. Um, we're writing a document and guidance at the moment on how to write for the web. So this um, will give you again more tips on how to be more engaging. Uh, and we're developing what we call a help center, which will be a section where you will, there'll be lots of questions uh, and answers that you can find with videos, checklists, documents, et cetera. Um, and that's coming uh, soon. Um, and Julie, uh, the, the version we launched for the for the project website is like a version one. Yes. So on yes. this slide, uh, you are presenting us what is coming in the version two. <laughs> yes. So uh, so you now have, uh, you can edit your homepage, you can edit your policy instruments, create news and events and manage your contacts. Uh, but um, we will be launching uh, new features over the summer. Um, so one of them is the library. So the media library, you'll be able to upload uh, files, videos um, from YouTube, uh, images, etc. So anything you need to, to share. Um, we'll also be creating um, the option for you to have extra pages. These are pages that you can tailor to your own needs. You can give them your own a title um, and write content for them. So they'll really be up to you to, um, to use. If you have a policy, uh, pilot action, uh, that information will also appear soon in your policy instrument section. And finally, we're building the page where you'll be able to display all the good practices you might, you'll identify over the course of the next few years. Yes, uh, Julie, now we go to the slider to answer the questions and I could see there was a question about the extra pages and thank you for confirming that the extra pages will be with version two uh, delivered uh, with our um, with our uh, version two of our project website. Uh, now, uh, talking about the policy instruments, uh, there is a question, if there is a limit, there are less policy instruments that partners at the moment on the website. If this is the case, I suppose it's a bug because normally all policy instruments that are included in your project application should be displayed on the project website. So please, I mean, for this person who posted to us, could you just send us a short message uh, by email to Julie and to tell uh, the acronym of your project? We will look into this. And also very important information for all of you in case indeed uh, there are other things you notice, uh, maybe there are some other bugs, do not hesitate to alert to us because um, uh, as you always know, with the new developments, there usually there are some small fixes we need to do. Julie worked very hard to try to eliminate all this before we launched, but for sure there can be something that we haven't noticed and uh, there are still something to, 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 to check and to, to, to fix. Okay, um, so the question uh, is uh, about the points on the map. How can we add pinpoints to the map? I guess it's related to the contact section. Uh, so Julie, maybe you can clarify this. Yes, uh, so on the contact page, there's a partnership map. So a map with um, all the pins to your partners. This uh, should be done automatically. Again, it's through the portal. So if in the portal, your organization has a physical address, then the map, the dot on the map should appear. If it doesn't, um, you should let us know right away. There could be um, different reasons, which I could basically um, we're using um, a, a software called Mapbox and it automatically um, checks the location of the address. But it's possible, especially with um, Greek or, 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 or um, non um, Latin text, that it has a problem finding this address. So we're, we're working on a solution. So if there's a pin missing, let us know um, right away and we will work on it to add it as quickly as possible. Yeah, we have one technical but very important question. I have an account in Intrack Europe. However, when going through my profile, uh, I need to edit a project, I need to log in, uh, and then my email and password are not recognized. What should I do in this case? Um, so there, if you're trying to edit the 2014-2020 project, uh, this is on the old website. 
and the account that you use to log into the old website is not the same as the one for this website. So it's possible that it doesn't recognize you because you're using the wrong passwords. Um, but again, this is quite specific. So if you could write me an email uh, with your project acronym for the old project and we can have a look um, at what the problem could be. Yes, and in this webinar, we really concentrate on the new system that is uh, dedicated to the projects in this programming period 2021-2027. So next question, to embed an image on the new section, it is not possible to upload it directly in the section, but you have to recover the image from a different section. Is there an easier way to manage this? Otherwise, you always have to get out from the new section and then re-enter it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what uh, this means um, because we saw in the video that um, if you're in the rich text editor tool, you click the media icon, you get um, a box that allows you to either choose a file from your computer or upload one that you've uploaded in the past. Um, so I've not had the experience uh, to have to come out and upload it again. So. Um, I guess again, if you could send me an email and we can have a look because I've never I've I've never had to do this, so I don't know exactly how to answer that question. But probably for the ones who are doing at least from the video, you could see that there is an easy way to upload the uh, the photos when you are creating news. Uh, next question: the section related to partner description will it be managed by the web manager or directly by each partner from the indirect account? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, so the answer is some of the information is managed um, by uh, the web, by either the by the admin, the, the person who has access to the portal. So, for example, the name of the organization, um, the address, the type of partner, et cetera, all that is done through the portal. So if you have access to the portal, you can do it there. Um, but for things like the logo, the general description about um, the partner, the social media profiles, this is done by the people involved in that organization. So if you're, um, you know, so basically, yes, each partner will um, upload their own logos and descriptions. It means each partner should be a part of Intra Europe community. Yeah. So uh, then, um... The web partner approves the good practice, but are they uploaded by the partners? And here we can see, yes, this is the case, that the good practices are uploaded by the organization that own the good practices. And then there is an internal process to, 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 to manage, and it's the web uh, manager or the lead partner, depends on the agreement of the project that reviews and approves this good practice before it reaches indeed our secretariat for the further review. Uh, Will we show the steps how to access our website? This was already did, we covered. In the future, we will have options to create added tabs of content we can decide for ourselves. This I confirm that yes, it will be possible and Julie told that there will be a possibility to create extra pages. Uh, the question we have, if we have an approved template to use to report new post performance like the one used in uh, CBC Med program, for example. Oh, no, we don't have um, a, a template approved, really. Um, it's your own creativity, I think, that we would like to, to see. Um, we, can, we are working on a guidance on writing for the web, and this will give you some help, uh, some advice on how to, how to write news. But um, really, what we want to see is, is your creativity. We want to let you shine. Yeah, and Julie, just to add, because indeed when creating news in our case, like the system we have, so that some fields are obligatory and that already adds a specific a little bit the structure and content wise, we indeed allow the freedom to adjust and to be creative on how to structure your content. Uh, another question, do you have a website model to use an example about good practice where we can read uh, good examples? So you can find um, good practices from the previous program um, on the Interreg Europe website. If you uh, go to policy solutions and you can search for good practices there, uh, I think we have over 
3,000 uh, in our database. We have quite quite a lot. So that's where um, I would suggest that you, you have a look at uh, for good examples. Mm -hmm. uh, and in addition, I mean, in terms of the project websites, as this project is launched uh, really, really recently, we did not yet screen which projects updated the content, but hopefully this exercise from our side will be done for September and you will learn later on that we will have a specific event uh, for you and hopefully at that uh, time we will be able to give you uh, some or at least to show some good examples. And by the way, what we do at the Secretariat, and hopefully we will repeat it also in this programming period, that after some months uh, when you edit the website, uh, your communication officer at Intric Europe Secretariat reviews uh, your pages and then gives also some, some tips, uh, send an email with some tips and also includes some nice, I mean, examples for inspiration. Uh, we can go now to the next uh, questions about the newsletter subscription. Are there any recommendations, ways, tools for collecting the email addresses? Um, yes, I mean, I would um, I wouldn't do it one by one. I think the easiest way is to use uh, an existing tool. We um, we use Mailchimp, but you can use uh, other tools as well. You just have to make sure that the tool you use is compliant with uh, GDPR regulations. Um, and yeah, but I wouldn't uh, try to do this manually. I think you should use an external tool. Uh, Julie, is it possible to preview the content we created before launching it on the website? Um, I not at the moment. Uh, you unfortunately you do have to save it and and then have a look at it. Uh, we are working on um, an option to publish as draft and then be able to preview, but it's not available yet. Um, I, would, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, your websites probably don't generate the amount of traffic that um, you know, someone would see uh, a mistake, for example, if, um, if you uploaded it and, and happened to fix it. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. My recommendation would be to prepare, write your content poss possibly in a Word file um, and go from there so that you know that at least um, the spelling is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, several questions about the analytics. Is it possible to collect information how many visitors were on the website, which was the most commonly viewed post, and how can the analytics indeed be monitored? So what indeed the Julie program plans in this sense? Yes, uh, so we are monitoring um, your website statistics. We're using a tool called, a tool called PWeek. Um, and we will be basically sending you your stats. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. You will, re you will receive them uh, by email. Uh, then the next question to clarify, who should be approved members of the project on the website? Only project partners, anyone from the project partner organizations, anyone who is interested? So this is really up to you. This is about your Interreg Europe uh, network on your project website. This is for you to decide, um, you know, some projects limit it to their partners, um, but uh, some also involve their stakeholders. Uh, this is, um, we, we won't uh, monitor this. This is up to you to choose. But I think rather it would be one and two points, uh, more really the people that are linked to, to your project rather than anyone who is uh, interested. Probably this would be the recommendation. Yes. Uh, going like partners or like uh, to add uh, maybe stakeholders. Okay, uh, if we have a photo from the uh, Shutterstock, could we add the original link in the credits? <laughs> oh. um, so as the program, we don't recommend that you use or purchase stock photos. Uh, we always recommend that you take your own so that you don't have to worry about uh, copyrights. Um, now, having said that, if you do purchase a license for an image, you have to make sure that um, that any pre-existing rights are granted to the union, its institution, and us, because we can go and use it and um, we won't be responsible if there's an issue. So, um, so if there is a credit, please do put it, uh, because it's very important that you comply with the copyright rules. 
Mm -hmm. uh, another question related to the photo credit for the website. Is it possible to use photos with credits that are not owned by the project after getting permission from the owner? For example, uh, photo archives from the partners about the other pro project promotional tools, videos, etc. So. Yes. Um, again, it's it's uh, just about making sure that if you do get permission to use it, it's not just for you. But it means that the union, the European Commission can use it and the program can use it in perpetuity. So um, do. Yeah. So again, it's uh, it's about getting permission for everyone to use it. Yeah, uh, we have a question asking us to, about our experience. What is the most performative social media to communicate about a project? Indeed, this question goes out of the scope of the webinar um, uh, topic we, we cover because we talk more about how to edit the project websites. But just to to to, to like uh, to give you, let's say, some tips, we always trust that the project know themselves what is the best what best social media channels work and we will be discussing this topic in our upcoming uh communication uh, uh training days in september but i will give more information about it a little bit later uh then uh the call to actions to promote the newsletter sounds great is it possible to ask in which language the people wish to receive the newsletter um, not at the moment. Um, I think it would be quite complicated to to have that uh, because then we'd have to provide all languages. Um, so at the moment, it's really just there to encourage people to sign up to your newsletter and promote the fact that you have one. Uh, so if they yes, if they want to sign up and their newsletter ends up being in a language they don't speak, then they might just unsign up, <laughs> unsubscribe. Yeah, and Julie, indeed, technically uh, in this newsletter subscription, there is one link they can add. But for example, if you have a newsletter in several languages, an option could be that mm. you create uh, a page or, or the news and you direct to there. And then from that kind of news, you list uh, and provide the links to the different uh, uh, languages uh, you will offer your newsletter, you know. Yeah, uh, and true. maybe also it could be that uh, there are maybe I'm not aware, but maybe there are some uh, tools where people subscribe and then at the later stage you choose the language. So, I mean, technically for us, for the subscription, how it works, it's it's one link. And I think then, I mean, you need to be creative how to how to I mean, how to tackle. But uh, it's, it's possible, I mean, using the means we provide to um, uh, to, to, to ask people indeed uh, to, to, to add afterwards in a later, let's say, stage uh, several languages. Uh, then the question about should we add local events like partner stakeholder meeting? Um, yes, I mean, uh, you can if you if you want. Uh, again, it's it's the tool is there to help you uh, provide practical information so people can attend your meetings. Um, so there's so please do do publish your your um, your local events. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie, uh, is there a location to upload press releases, newsletters, or maybe there is a place you would recommend where this information could be published on the project website? Uh, yes. So I guess it depends on the format of your press release or newsletter. Um, if it's, for example, a document, you'll be able to use the library. Uh, to do this, um, which is coming soon. Um, if it you can, you know, always if it's uh, published on a separate website, you can always create a news article and link to it. Um, so um, I think it just depends on what format your press release or newsletters are. Mm -hmm. A very good question. Uh, is the project communication officer able to send queries directly for operational questions or does she has to follow the lead partner rule, meaning is the lead partner to send to communication to secretariat? Indeed, um, the rule is uh, that uh, you as the project communication officer, you can contact us and directly uh, contact indeed responsible uh, communication officer at the joint secretariat 
so you can if the questions are related to the website uh, you only need then to keep your lead partner your policy officer your finance officer uh, in copy of this uh, conversation but you can contact us also directly exactly for those operational uh, questions then where to find the images and videos uh, like about free images etc that comply i can suppose with the with the copyrights uh, yes, so our rules are published in the program manual um, and they're also available um, in this help and tips section on the website editor tool. Um, so this is and of course, if you are using an image bank, you should use um, images that are creative commons. I think these are the ones that are absolutely free. I can see my colleague shaking her head. So obviously I've said uh, the wrong one, but basically we don't recommend you use image banks. Uh, really, we do recommend you take your own pictures. Uh, then there's no worry whatsoever um, about, um, you know, about uh, copyright rules. And with everyone having a smartphone these days, um, the images can come up really good quality. Uh, there is one question about do we collect the media appearances as it was done previously? Clearly someone who implemented the project in the previous programming period. The answer is no, we don't have this indicator anymore on the project or program level. So you will not need to collect or to, to be accountable for any media appearances like it was in the past. So uh, it's very, very easy. And then the question about the Google Analytics, Julie uh, explained that we are not using the Google Analytics. We had to change the tool uh, because to, to comply indeed with all the European law. Uh, now we're using another tool and there will be analytics sent on your website performance as we similarly like as we did in the past uh, some key figures uh, to you by email we are uh, now working to finalize indeed this project so soon this information should reach you uh, then the question we have can uh, you can use the database uh, contacts of the partners to send the newsletters can you use the contacts of the partners to send the newsletters um so to send any mailing, you need to make sure that you comply with the GDPR rules. So you need people's consent to to send anything to them. So um, it's uh, I I would be a little careful about just sending existing contacts. I think it's probably better uh, to um, use the call to action to recruit uh, to to collect new. Um, um, new email addresses, um, or maybe there's a way to get uh, their consent, but you need their consent in order to email them. Julie, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we answered all the questions that were related to the uh, web project websites. The last question I leave for me because it's a few more things to present and it will indeed provide the answer about the September event. Uh, thank you very much, Julie, to you. Thank you very much to all our active participants that listened carefully uh, to all information on how to edit project uh, websites. Um, we have now uh, a poll uh, and a question to you to ask you how prepared do you feel to edit your project website? And you can let us know uh, if you feel uh, not ready at all, of you are really feel ready and eager to, to edit. And I can see that uh, the most points we get, almost everyone uh, votes chose from three to five, uh, means that after this webinar, indeed, you are ready uh, to edit your project website. This is great. In case you have uh, any questions, uh, please remember that we are here to support you. All the um, guidance you received during this webinar today will be published online, so you can always consult all this material. Julie also explained that when you um, are in uh, the system to, to edit the project uh, websites, there are also uh, you can click on additional information and get additional support. 
So uh, now it's time for you to give us your feedback about um, uh, the webinar of today, and you can see a few questions we have posted. This is very important to us because it helps for us to increase the quality of our uh, webinars and trainings. And uh, the last slides are about the activities that are coming up. Uh, project training days, 26th, 28th of September. I will be welcoming, not only I myself, but also all my colleagues will be welcoming lead partners to the project training days. And three days um, you will spend with us here in Lille to talk about the finances, about the project activities reporting, and there will be also one day dedicated to communication where we will be in details discussing different aspects of um, of uh, different communication activities. Normally, you already received an information, an email from us to save the date and registration will be opening soon. So the lead partners, uh, communication uh, managers will receive very soon invitation to register to the project training days. And uh, there are two more events that are uh, coming up. Uh, a webinar uh, next week, 27th of June, for the lead partners on reporting. In this webinar, we will be presenting the portal. The portal is indeed um, the uh, interface, an online interface where you submitted your project application, where you will be continuing indeed to work on the portal to, uh, to report about your project activities. So our colleagues will have a webinar on the 27th of June to present indeed the technical all aspects of the portal. And then um, uh, for the ones who are interested in the climate adaptation, um, very good news that on the 28th of June, we have a webinar organized by our policy learning platform on wetland restoration. Again, you can join if you're interested in the topic or if you know um, other uh, people from your organization that are interested in this topic, they are welcome to join because all the thematic webinars uh, are open indeed to any uh, to anyone who is interested and it even goes beyond um, the project. So with this information, it's time to thank to you for a very active participation. It's time also for me to thank to Julie for answering all your questions online. It's time to thank you to Petra and Josephine, who were also together with us today uh, during this webinar. So I wish you a very nice day. It's still a very sunny and a warm day in Lille. Uh, I hope that it's the case also in your country. And I um, hope uh, that we meet uh, with you in person in September and it will be as nice and as warm as uh, today. So having, have a good day and good luck editing your project website. Bye-bye.